When people think of social media, usually a few things come to mind. They think of rampant selfies. They think of cats doing weird things. And if you're a politician, you even think of innovative ways to try to get young people excited about politics. But in 2013, something would happen that changed the way we looked at social media. Edward Snowden, a former NSA contractor, leaked several classified documents to the press detailing numerous NSA surveillance programs ran by the United States and its allies. With that, one thing forced itself into the forefront of the popular consciousness, privacy. Now, during that time, I worked as an intelligence analyst and was in a unique position to appreciate the impact of those disclosures. While many in the general population saw it as a egregious offense to their privacy, many people in the intelligence community saw it as a dangerous disclosure of sensitive uh, techniques. Whatever you think of those disclosures, what can, be said, what can be said of them is that it raised an important conversation about privacy in the 21st century. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is a way that intelligence and social media intertwine and meet. But before I do that, ooh. <laughs> all right. Before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about intelligence tradecraft. So intelligence agencies use a variety of techniques to gather the information that they need. Some of the more well-known techniques are the use of spy satellites and the building of agent networks. One way that uh, that they do collect this information is something is through something called open source intelligence, or OSN for short. Now, OSN is defined by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and the Department of Defense as intelligence derived from publicly available sources. Now, these publicly available sources can include anything from media, uh, newspapers, government announcements, and academic papers. OSN isn't a, really, isn't a new concept. For as long as they've existed, intelligence agencies have been using public sources to complement other ways of gathering intelligence to satisfy what is required of them. But with the advent of social media, this is a huge game changer for the OSN discipline. Social media has a wide variety of benefits over traditional sources of OSN. For one, a large amount of it is produced. As an example, Twitter goes through about 4,000 tweets per second, corresponding to around 500 million tweets per day. Number two, a lot of it, oh, well, a lot of it uh, comes from a variety of sources. So anyone with a user account and a couple of minutes can widely public publicize information and get that information to a worldwide audience. It, this is in contrast to government organizations and news agencies that have to go through a lengthy, lengthy publication process. And third, most of the information on social media is publicly available to a well-documented interface. Now, the third point is really, really important because anyone with a little know-how can gain an insight into activities happening around the world in near real time. Social media-derived OSN actually also has numerous advantages over traditional forms of intelligence. For, uh, I talked about uh, some, some varieties of, of ways that intelligence agencies gather their information, but all of them have one huge flaw. They can't be everywhere at the same time, and they must prioritize their collection. If an event were to happen in an otherwise sleepy area of the world, a massive technical and bureaucratic effort would have to be undertaken to refocus our efforts. Whereas anyone with a smartphone and an internet connection can become an integral part into a new, dynamic, involving situation. People talk about technology lowering the barriers of entry to certain industries. We see it in commerce, in media, in distribution. But I believe that social media can lower the barriers of entry to intelligence analysis itself. One, thing I will, well, one example I want to go over today is the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. 
Just a little background for those who may need it. In late 2013, protests erupted all over Ukraine over the failure to broker an agreement with the European Union that would have fostered closer political and economic ties. In early 2014, the then President Viktor Yukanovich was forced to flee the country and resign his position. A few weeks after his resignation, armed troops began to flood into the Crimean Peninsula in Ukraine, taking over strategic locations all around the area. What was then referred to widely in the media as the Little Green Men was widely to believe to be members of the uh, Russian Special Forces. So pictures of the uh, social... Picture, <laughs> pictures of uh, Little Green Men again began to proliferate and spread throughout YouTube and Twitter. An example here is an analysis actually done by a Reddit user where he no, uh, noted numerous examples of equipment and modifications used specifically by the Russian military. Another example was a video that spread of the little green men uh, using meal rations issued by the Russian military. One example even got a name tag a soldier forgot to remove, and he was subsequently identified by name and attached to a Russian Special Forces unit. Now, the aftermath of all of this um, was the Ukrainian military was eventually driven out of the peninsula, and a referendum was held over the question of joining Russia, which passed by an overwhelming margin. Now, Russia eventually owned up to its presence in, the, in Crimea before the referendum. But what Russia still has not acknowledged is its presence in the eastern Ukraine. Currently, Ukraine is in conflict with armed separatists in eastern regions of the country forcing, uh, facing the Russian border. Um, so... So uh, just, just as uh, social media uh, began to spread a light over the activities happening in Crimea, they've also began to ga get, give us, gave us insight over uh, er, uh, activities happening in eastern Ukraine. A prime example of this is a particular Russian soldier named Alexander Sotkin. Now, through his social media presence, he describes himself as a communication specialist cur currently working in the Russian military. Now, most of his activity is, is pretty normal. He has pictures of selfies and his friends, and there's one weird one eating him eating a watermelon. But uh, these two photos I want to look at, I want to look at in particular. Now, from an analytical standpoint, there's really not much to say about these photos. There are no visible landmarks to discern where he is. What, what most you can probably say is the second one, even though it's a little dark and a little blurry, the lights in the background suggest he may be in a military vehicle. But we have something that is a whole lot better than trying to identify vi visual landmarks. Instagram, through a user preference, will gladly attach location data to any public post the user makes. So when we map out Alexander's Instagram activity, we see that while most of them happen near an area near Moscow, a large majority of them happen near an area near the border where the Russian military was conducting exercises at the time. And those two photos that I've just shown happen to be within eastern Ukraine. Now, there are a lot of explanations as to why these, these photos ha uh, were uh, located in eastern Ukraine. For example, if a user disables GPS on their phone and they're not connected to a Wi-Fi network, the cell phone will try to use the next best thing, which is a triangulation of uh, nearby cell phone towers. And depending on the distance of those cell phone towers and whether the user is moving or not, these can be highly, highly inaccurate. But this isn't the only example of soldiers posting incriminating information on social media. We have examples of soldiers boasting about 
convoys heading in and out of Ukraine. We have one example of a soldier who belongs to an artillery unit boasting about striking targets uh, cross-border into, into eastern Ukraine. He even included a nice photo of said artillery. Here's a declassified photo released by the U.S. government backing up that narrative, showing evidence of striking into uh, eastern Ukraine from the Russian side of the border. Now, why does this matter? Why do we care about you know, a conflict in, in Ukraine? Well, a lot, of, a lot of, uh, of the conversation has been focused solely on how social media works to the detriment of privacy of the individual. How it makes it easier for their governments to spy on their activities and keep track of its citizens. But I don't believe this lack of privacy is a one-way street. Social media is giving us an unprecedented look into how governments are conducting their activities and is shedding a light into some of their mo most sensitive areas. Now, there's a common saying about um, how, hi how history is run by the victors, but I really don't believe that to be the case. I believe that going forward, that a new narrative will spring out. I believe that history will solely be written by the tweeters. Yeah. It will be written by those who hashtag. Thank you.